Hello, my name is Lisa Roger from Otimo, and I want to welcome you to the CIO podcast. On this show, we seek to share insights and experiences from the world's leading CIOs and transformation agents. So tune in if you're a CIO or an entrepreneur looking for inspiration. Welcome. Well, welcome everybody to the podcast, and we are so lucky to have our special guest today, Gada Ijam. Welcome, Gada. How are you? Hi, Lisa. Good to see you virtually. It's so wonderful to see you. I need to tell everybody about how wonderful you are. So Gada is the CIO, Chief Information Officer for the Federal Reserve System. She leads federal technology and cybersecurity professionals that move at the speed of business. I love how that that you guys say this. Um, Driving collaboration and innovation to shape the Fed's digital future. Overseeing IT within a federal or a federated organization. So she's in charge of many parts uh, and she partners with leaders from different reserve banks and centralized service providers to deliver business technology solutions for the central bank. Before joining, though, the bank, uh, Gata was a CIO for Amtrak, and prior to Amtrak, she led leadership roles at Intel, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, and U.S. Bank Corp. So really a wonderful background, full of experience. Uh, Gata also, she serves on the board of directors for Goodwill of Greater Washington. Um, And some recognition, I have to let you know, Gada was a recipient of 2023 CIO Hall of Fame and a capital CIO Orbi winner, just like me. And she was named one of Virginia's <laughs> top women leaders by Virginia Bu- Business Magazine. Um, she uh, got her civil engineering degree at Kuwait University and her MBA at Virginia Tech, go Hokies. And her executive education, uh, she has executive education certificate from Wharton uh, School. So, uh, wow, very esteemed background. It's so wonderful to have you here. Can you tell our audience Thank a little you, Lisa. bit? Lisa, you just made me blush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, anyways, people want to know what what is it, the Federal Reserve? What do you guys do? What's your mission? Uh, so our mission is to make sure that we have a stable economy uh, and an economy that has a managed level of inflation as well as full employment. So, And we call it the dual mandate. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's from an economic policy perspective. Uh, we also supervise uh, you know, financial institutions to make sure that we have a stable financial system uh, for the country and the world. Uh, and that's why the U.S. banking system is highly regarded as a reliable, uh, you know, uh, inst- set of institutions. Uh, we also, the little uh, not fully known secret, uh, we also run payments rail. So uh, if you receive a paycheck, uh, so there's a 50-50 chance that your paycheck was processed through the payments rail uh, that we call ACH. Uh, if you are sending a large wire uh, to another institution, uh, that is processed through our payments rail. Uh, if you transact with cash and you love your cash and go to ATM machines and carry cash, which I don't carry cash, unfortunately, it's not a good habit. But if you if you like cash, uh, we have cash processing where we uh, count and uh, sort of move cash around to the different banks and get rid of, uh, you know, old uh, cash notes. Uh, And then last but not least, uh, we uh, also engage in our communities. Uh, We have presence in 12 districts uh, and through that presence, uh, we are actively engaged in communities and community outreach for the betterment of the community that we live in. Oh, that's wonderful. I don't know that I knew all of that. So thank you for that. Um, <laughs> I re- really appreciate the background there. So just as a little icebreaker, sure. a little warm up, we're going to play a game called Rapid Fire. I'm going to give you choices. Now, I can only I can tell you of the recordings I've done so far, only one CIO has been able to follow the directions. 
So the directions uh -oh. are you get, yeah, you get <laughs> so to make there's a no choice. option number three. There's no option number three, and there's no explanation. You just have to pick one, and we know okay, you. and no pass, and, right? And we quick no passing. You you have to pick one, and then we go okay. to the next option. Okay. okay, are you ready? Okay, sounds good. Okay. Ready, ready. Sunset or sunrise? Sunset. Paper or plastic? Paper. Dogs or cats? Dogs for sure. Unix or Windows? Windows. Texting or calling? Texting. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. <laughs> Mac or PC? PC. Standard or automatic? Automatic. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Samsung or iPhone? iPhone. On-prem or in the in the cloud? In the cloud. Mountain or ocean? Ocean. Fiction or nonfiction? Fiction. And the last one, Star Trek or Star Wars? Star Trek. Okay, on this one, I always let people give an explanation. Why did you pick Trek over Wars? Um, I hesitated because I, I'm not like a huge fan of either. <laughs> uh, but if I had to pick one, <laughs> I'll go for Star Trek. Star Trek <laughs> gives you smaller bites. <laughs> Star Wars, you have to suffer through three hours. Uh, and for the less Star of a Wars, commitment. Fans, I apologize. <laughs> you will outcast me. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Uh, I love it. I, I love digging into people's personalities this way. Super fun. Thank you for the <laughs> sport. Um, sure. I was dying to make comments, but I followed the rules. <laughs> You did. You did. You get. You get the second <laughs> second crown. I get to award uh, so far. I'm following there you go. Well done. Well done. All right. Let's talk about the topic this year for Otimo is all about digital transformation. We're helping a lot of organizations, but you have got rich experience. So I want our audience to learn from you and your wisdom on this. Uh, but can let's start back though when it comes to the actual strategy of the Federal Reserve. How does its, you know, your your organization strategy pull into how you think about, approach digital transformation? Sure. Um, so we are the central bank, which means we have a responsibility uh, that is bigger than, uh, you know, th than a typical organization. Uh, so for us, uh, the criteria that we use when we evaluate strategy and strategic plans and, and look at sort of uh, our, put our eyes towards the future, risk, uh, resiliency, reliability, trust, uh, those are uh, very, very important factors that we have to take into account uh, as we think about sort of the choices that we can make when we're driving strategy uh, and the, uh, you know, decisions that and pathways that we take to drive that strategy forward. Um, so, you know, I talked about our business lines, supervision and regulation, supervising uh, banking institutions, exercising monitor policy, running payment systems, etc. And, you know, we have 22,000 employees, so we have your typical HR finance, running a business type uh, capabilities. Um, so the strategies are driven by the mission of the Fed. Um, so, you know, a lot of organizations that are in the for-profit uh, world, their strategies are driven by market competition, uh, by sort of their shareholder, uh, you know, value uh, drivers, etc. you know, their product offerings, etc. In our case, uh, we don't have those factors to take into account. So the factors that we take into account is how do we deliver the mission of the Fed? And we deliver the mission of the Fed through the multiple business lines uh, that I talked about a little bit earlier. And therefore we talk about where, where do we want to be? Uh, part of the way do we want to be uh, is influenced by technology trends influenced by sort of where the industry that we, you know, sort of supervise is going. Um, and some of it is purely influenced by where does the organization 
want to go in order to serve its mission best. And that's what drives us. That's great. Let's let's pull that a little bit and drill down to you and your organization. How does the CIO enable that? How how do you what is your role in making the magic happen when it comes to strategy? Um, so yeah, my mantra inside the Fed as well as outside the Fed, IT is in the business for the business. So uh, the technology strategy has to start first with a conversation with the business leaders and partnering with the business leaders and asking the question, what is your strategy? What is your vision? Where do you want to take your business in the next three to five years? Uh, what important problems you need to solve for your business? Uh, what keeps you up at night? Uh, and sort of what does success look like three years, five years down the road? So that's sort of part one of the conversation uh, that we have with our business partners. Part two, they're looking to us as a technology organization and as, as experts in the technology to translate the many things that are happening in the tech space into the so what for them, right? And sort of help them imagine the art of the possible. Uh, even though a lot of business leaders these days are very tech savvy, but there's so much going on in the technology space that it's prudent for us as you know, technology leaders to bring to the table with the understanding of their business, with the understanding of their strategy, here's what's possible, here's what you can use technology for, here's the value that technology can bring to you. And then you marry those two together <laughs> into sort of a, a, a feasible, viable, strategic plan for the mission of the organization or the business of the organization so you can achieve, you know, the success measures that you're trying to achieve. So it's really an iterative process. Uh, I love that part of the job where we're sitting at the table, understanding what, what makes the business tick, what makes the organization tick, uh, understanding sort of what's happening in the world around us and what makes sense for us and what doesn't make sense for us. And then really sort of collaborating to define a future state that makes sense for the organization where we're all excited about that, excited about taking the journey together. Um, that, that sort of is very energizing, very exciting. And then the hard work starts, right? <laughs> is to make the strategy a reality. And that's where the uh, blood, sweat and tears come into play. Oh, I hear you. And I love what you said about business for the business, right? I, I, you, I love that line that you had um, and, you know, pulling in that and you and you mentioned how you're bringing technologies to help with that art of the possible, like ideation and imagination yep. of where they can be. And that can be so daunting these days. You know, there's so many. Yes. Uh, so many solutions, so so, mu so, so many, many choices, inno <laughs> so many choices, so many new innovations. How how do you know yes. best how to marry that business for the business, the art of the possible, to their need? How do you do that? How do you stay abreast? How does your organization keep up? First, have smart people on the team, <laughs> right? I love that. That's like job that. number one. <laughs> job number one: have the smart people on the team. Uh, that are curious, they sort of, I would sort of quote uh, Satya Nadella, uh, the Microsoft CEO, don't be a know-it-all, be, be a learn-it-all. Uh, so people who are curious, people who want to learn, uh, people who uh, have enough uh, business acumen and empathy for the business to really understand the business before they sort of speak technology. Because uh, a lot of technologists, really smart technologists, probably start with the technology and our sort of approach and guidance to the team is start with the business problem and then apply the technology solution. Um, the other part of staying abreast, uh, again, encouraging people to develop and uh, learn from others through conferences, uh, through attending, you know, training, uh, we do have a, a technology advisory council where we bring in people from the outside to tell us what's going on. Uh, so we have that sort of advantage as the Federal Reserve System to convene 
different uh, people uh, and have them not feel that they're competing against each other and share uh, some of those uh, insights and knowledge. And of course, when, when need be, we would sort of tap into outside help to help us with some of those, uh, you know, out of the box thinking, uh, you know, out of the box technology capabilities uh, that would be relevant to us. So it's all of the above, but it starts with smart people. I love it. It always comes back to that, doesn't it? Surrounding yourself with smart people. Yes. I love it. <laughs> Yes. Speaking of technology and the uh, may or may not be specific in your plan, but, you know, are there any insights for upcoming technologies that, you know, have you curious or excited or think that, you know, that you think will shape what we're doing in the future? Uh, so I think I'm going to say something that's probably not novel anymore uh, to a lot of us in the IT field. Right, uh, Gen AI, <laughs> Chat GPT, <laughs> Copilot. I mean, you name it. Large language models, uh, etc. But that's coming uh, at a fast and furious uh, rate. And if you if you look at the hype cycle of uh, new technology, uh, it's it usually it's usually used to take years for that hype cycle to go from you know interesting, and then into sort of mainstream. This one is moving at a very, very fast pace. Uh, and I think we recognized that signal a few months ago within the Fed. And because we have uh, an innovation office uh, that we stood up a couple of years ago, we took advantage of that capability and we quickly sort of were able to set up shop uh, where we set up sort of a sandbox and experimentation type uh, area for people to uh, test business cases, test the technology, learn about the nuances of the technology in a safe and responsible way, right? Again, back to our mission as a central bank, reliability, security, uh, you know, uh, and trust is very, very important. So we had to come up with the right measure to allow us to experiment and then uh, apply some use cases that may be relevant to us. So I expect this to become something for us. Uh, I think a lot of organizations are expecting this to be something for them. Uh, we just don't know where yet. And that's why we have sort of a broad spectrum of use cases that we're experimenting with just to prove the value and sort of prove the benefit uh, to the organization. Uh, I am challenging uh, our technology teams to test Copilot because I hear a lot of really good stories from colleagues that are highlighting that Copilot is giving them extra capacity within their development teams so that they can use to fulfill the backlog of demand for IT. Uh, so that's an interesting value proposition because we do have a lot of demand for IT and there's so much you can grow from a budget and people perspective. Um, so. I'm challenging the inside team, like the IT team, sort of to drink our own champagne or eat our own dog food first. Uh, to, to see, yeah, champagne. <laughs> um, but we're also engaging with the business on some use cases as well. So I think that's, that's a thing. That's something that we'll, uh, we will see moving fast and faster than other technologies that we have seen in the past. Yeah, I, I have to agree. I I just read an article recently where the that hype cycle, what took the same number of users, Facebook, I think took five years, took um, Gen AI three months. So talk about accelerated wow. hype cycle, um, wow. just the number yeah. of subscribers, yeah. um, just crazy adoption. So um, I'm with you on that. Um, Let's shift yeah. a little bit about, especially your role and when it comes to, you know, the challenges of bringing something new in, you know, when, it, and that's what we're talking about when we talk about transformation, we're, we're talking about changing, you know, the paradigm in some way, uh, people process technology. Yeah. What are some of the challenges in your experience that you've had to face? Um, so, you know, digital transformations are, are hard, right? Uh, they are change, uh, you know, a change in how, you know, people do their jobs, uh, change in how the business uh, does its work, 
change in technology footprint. Uh, you know, so it, it takes a lot of change. Uh, and the challenge, or you can look at it as the opportunity with digital transformation, is the change. Uh, you can see it as a challenge because change is hard. You can see it as an opportunity because change is going to give you a better outcome than what you have today. And it's something that you need to do to stay up to date with the time or with the technology uh, or with uh, where the business is going. Um, a couple of things that are, you know, I've experienced and I, sh I know many leaders experience when they're driving a digital transformation strategy is one, how do you how do you get the buy in and the alignment towards that strategy? Because that change requires uh, many leaders to be on board and many people to be on board to make that change happen. Uh, and in any typical change, people may be resistors to change. People may be champions and excited about the change because they see the vision and the value. And then there's a lot in the middle who are sort of with sitting and waiting on the sidelines for a couple of clicks to go forward to test whether this is set up for success and then they'll jump on the bandwagon. So challenge number one is how do you sell the business case? How do you get more people excited and have them be part of your journeys because the more uh, you have that are excited about the journey, the more ambassadors in the organization you will have to rally others uh, to come along into the journey. Second, it's a long journey. It requires a lot of patience, uh, a lot of persistence that this is a priority. Yes, we are still going forward in that direction uh, and we should not change that direction unless we learn something new that requires us to change that direction. So having the patience, persistence, right? The leadership and sponsorship from the top uh, to carry us through that long journey is another opportunity slash challenge in this space. And then third, it's really actually delivering the value, right? In the strategy, you're looking ahead three to five years, you're promising things in three to five years, but you don't know all the details uh, and you don't know if your assumptions and your case is, is valid. Uh, so having the agility mindset and the agility model in the organization so that you can always come back and test, learn. Uh, what have you learned? Have you achieved what you said you're going to achieve? And if not, why not? And what did you learn so that you can apply it to the next cycle and do it better uh, is, is it another challenge again that you can turn into an opportunity to make the progress uh, that we all need to make on our digital transformation journeys i love it you have had great insights from you know the the business for the business to you know turning opportunity you know challenges into opportunities and bringing people along um really wonderful stuff um, um can you i'd like to pull that thread a little bit more on the challenge becoming the opportunity and specifically around culture. How does culture play with that? Is, is that part of that formula? And and how have you seen that play out, played out in the transformations that you've done? Uh, I, I, I'm really bad at names, but I think Peter Drucker uh, quoted uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Uh, yeah. So yeah, culture is very important in uh, making sure that the strategy is successful and again delivers you know what it's promised to deliver and that's why i think part of um, you know transformation digital transformation and strategic transformation it's really important to put together and be intentional about uh, a communication strategy Right. Uh, I worked for a, a wonderful CIO at some point earlier in my career. And at the time, you know, the e-commerce bubble was happening, not not the bubble, but the e-commerce sort of uh, uh, focus was happening. And she wanted to drive an e-commerce strategy for the organization, but nobody got it. Nobody understood what it is. Nobody understood the value of what it is. And she was on a mission, Lisa. She, like, she was like touring the world, standing up in front of a crowd, almost every day of the week, talk, telling the story, 
telling people why, telling people so what, telling people what's in it for them, and sort of getting people to sort of see what she's seeing and see the value of that transformation strategy. And, you know, as she traveled the world and communicated the strategy, her message became clearer and more crisp and more energizing and more sort of uh, winning to the hearts and minds. And the lesson I learned from that experience is if you're driving change, you want to help people understand what the change is, why the change is important and what's in it for them and how, what role do they play in that change. So communication becomes key. Uh, and again, I saw it firsthand. I saw when she first started and a lot of people were standing on the sidelines like, ah, yeah, e-commerce, you know, buzzword to, wow, this is important. Let's, let's, let's go get it done. And we did get it done. What a beautiful lesson. Yeah. That you got to see firsthand and now that you're applying to your own. I know. I loved it. Yeah. That's she was wonderful. brilliant. She walked the talk. I love it. Yeah. So speaking, she of- walked the talk. She taught us a lot of lessons through the walking of the talking. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So if you had to face yourself, your younger self, yourself, when you're just getting out of college and knowing what you know today, what advice would you give this young, beautiful person coming out of, out of uh, college and, and entering the business world? What advice would you give her knowing the journey that you've been on? Yeah, uh, interesting. Um, so I, I, first advice is it's worth it. Uh, yes, it's a hard journey, uh, but keep your dream alive uh, because it is worth it. It is rewarding. Uh, right. Uh, you know, I, I, I've had lots of aspirations uh, about my career um, and, you know, increment gradually. Right. I, I didn't get everything I wanted in the time that I wanted to get it. Uh, but eventually I got it. Uh, and I think the journey was worth it. Um, I met amazing leaders and mentors and coaches. I met amazing friends and colleagues uh, along the journey. Um, I learned a lot. I grew up a lot as an individual, as a human being, as a leader. Um, I kept my skills and, and sort of rain fresh and rich. Uh, and uh, and I, I, I made differences wherever I went. Uh, so I definitely worth it. Um, I think the one single piece of advice that I observe sort of more of the new generation apply much better than, you know, my generation have done in the past. And probably it's the sign of times that we live in. They are able to achieve a better work-life balance. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better. And for me, uh, you know, as I was growing up as a leader, uh, I did pay a price uh, from a work-life balance. Uh, and there are times that probably I should have made better choices uh, about the family and myself uh, versus career. Uh, but I chose a lot of times career. Again, part of it is because of my ambition. And I think my younger self, I'll say, it's okay to pace yourself down because you're going to get there <laughs> uh, because you have the ambition and you have the will and you have the sort of um, the uh, ability and capability to get there. Uh, that would be the one sort of area that I want to, I would advise others to do better than I did. Uh, but definitely worth it. Definitely a fun ride. Uh, definitely an amazing learning experience. Uh, and, you know, I really encourage a lot of young women that I work with and, and coach to keep following their dreams because um, it could happen. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. I, I can't thank you for being so um, transparent and vulnerable. And I, I think what a sign of a beautiful leader when you can, when you can look at the women that came before you and apply those lessons. And then you can look back at your own, like, you know, where you, where you weren't perfect, but you know, you, you were able to get through the journey yeah. and, and be so, you know, mindful and introspective and and transparent thank you i cannot thank you enough uh for your time here today i cannot thank you for uh, your nuggets of wisdom um it's just been a total joy 
Um, and I hope everybody enjoyed this uh, episode of the podcast and uh, take note about, um, you know, holding on to your dream. It's worth the journey um, and, yeah. uh, and having that balance. So thank you so much. Um, and um, see thank you guys. Thank you, Lisa, for time. having me. And I'm re really glad that, yeah, thank you so much. And I'm really glad that we met through the Capital CIO uh you know orby awards uh you know that was really a fortunate way to get connected and and here we are uh That's so right. very grateful for you you are an amazing role model yourself uh and thank you for having me here oh you are so welcome you're so welcome all right everybody take care see you next time